worst thing that can happen is that the customer gets the feeling he's not able to control your house anymore. So and that's something that happens quite often when you provide fancy automations uh, directly integrated into the KNX system. Hey everybody, uh, I'm Satya and this is the third episode of Talking Smart Homes and our guest today is uh, Daniel Leitzbach, the CEO of Munich-based smart home company Koyakon. Hi Daniel. Hi Satya, thanks for inviting me to Talking Smart Homes. Yeah, thanks for being here. And uh, today's topic is uh, push buttons or more generally manual control in uh, KNX. Because I feel like this is an important topic because like if you ask most people about, about uh, uh, user interfaces in KNX, they will, they will think like uh, app for a smart home or maybe even voice control. But in reality, like most of the controls or most of the commands are still done through manual controls, like manual push buttons. And this is why the configuration and the positioning of manual controls is a crucial factor um, if we're talking about the usability and user friendliness of the KNX smart home. Um, but before we start, Daniel, um, maybe you can tell us something about yourself and the Koyakon company. Of course, yeah. So, uh, yeah, as you told already, my name is Daniel. Um, I'm a passionate smart home engineer and I'm with Koyakon uh, since four years now, since it was founded. Um, Koyakon is a typical smart home integrator or more or less a smart home designer. Um, so we do private houses, KNX and all the smart home systems you, you have on the market. And furthermore, we're also a technology consultant for uh, construction industry in terms of smart building and digitalization. Okay, so we have a big professional here. So let's go to the push buttons. <laughs> Uh, so first question, so probably you've encountered, you know, in your career, you've encountered a customer that would say like, I want to do a smart home without any push buttons on the wall. So do you think this is doable? And furthermore, do you think this is wise to do? And can you actually make a smart home without any manual controls on the walls? Well, um, I, I have a customer who did that. So he is uh, controlling everything with Alexa. Um, I would definitely say that's doable. Um, you have uh, quite a lot of solutions on the market and you can combine uh, KNX very nicely with uh, Alexa, Siri and also Google Assistant. Um, I would say it's vice. Um, you know, the fact, the thing is a smart home the basic principle still needs to be uh, usability. So you mentioned it in your intro. Um, you need to have an intuitive user interface and um, talking to something you can't see is not really intuitive for everyone, like your guests, your children, your grandma. And I think that's a big issue you have. So for us, um, speech or voice control is more or less uh, an add-on to the basic control principles of your smart home. Okay, so basically it's like, it depends on the user, but generally it's not recommended to do it in, a, in, a, in the whole house. But what about, you know, uh, are there some cases when this, is, uh, when, when this works, like, you know, like uh, maybe a hallway, garage, basement, if you have uh, presence sensors or a movement detection sensor, do you still need a switch on the wall? Well, Speaking for the voice control, I would say um, you can do this for the whole house, of course. Again, um, you need to do this as an add-on. You need to um, do, this, do this additionally. Um, for example, a big use case is when you're in the living room. So um, speaking to, to your um, assistant from your living room, from your couch, for example, turning off lights, closing shutters, it's very uh, user-friendly and it's very, very fancy and cool. Um, speaking of sensors, like the present sensors, um, I definitely recommend to use them for um, rooms like um, basement, technical rooms, or like hallways, um, or rooms without windows, for example, where you always have to switch on the light or and switch it off. So um, a basic principle for a smart home design from our perspective is 
that you automate things that you don't want to control manually. So again, speaking of some technical room or like a garage, for example, you always need light, you don't have windows, so you always have to switch on and switch off and you just pass through this room so you can easily automate it. That's not the case for every kind of room, but um, as you mentioned, hallways, for example, for this kind of room, it's very useful. So you can choose a um, presence detector instead of a control, a typical control, yeah. So instead, so not a presence sensors and a switch, just a presence sensor. So this, this is depends on the This depends on the customer. So we also have, for example, for uh, big apartment buildings, we often use this additionally to a switch also in the hallway. Because sometimes you have customers that are not, um, they don't feel comfortable with, with uh, presence detection. So they want to switch the presence detection off and then you don't have a, a control of the light in the hallway. So some, there are also products on the market where you, can, where you have a switch and the presence detection in uh, one sensor, for in example. In the same device. And that's, yeah, it's the same device and that's a good solution for this kind of customer. Okay, thanks, Daniel. Uh, now let's take a look at the you know different types of push buttons that are available on the market. I mean there is a wide variety of different you know uh, shapes and sizes and colors, uh, but basically you can divide those all all of those push buttons into two types, like the classical push buttons, like the ones that you use when you know you're doing a, a, a home without any smart home system, and then you have the KNX push buttons. And uh, what would you say are the main differences between those two types in terms of uh, usability, you know, from the, from the usability perspective? Yeah. Um, well, there is a, there's really um, one big difference between classic switches and digital switches. So you need to mention, although it's KNX, for example, or it's a digital switch, it can still look like a classic switch. The difference is um, those digital switches, they can provide feedback. So they are a bidirectional user interface. That's something a classical switch cannot do. So our best example for this is if you, um, if you compare a traditional switch, which remains into position when you uh, switch a light on, for example, um, this cannot be moved from something else. You know, it stays in position. So it cannot provide feedback if someone or something from um, yeah from another system is controlling the light, turning it off, for example. The switch will always stay in this position. So when combining traditional switches with a smart home, you always use rocker switches, um, sometimes two-way rocker switches. And um, that works quite good, but um, the feedback is also something you shouldn't neglect. So um, in terms of usability, you can have LEDs, you have... Um, for example, temperature indication, and um, then you have more usability out of this one switch. Okay, I get it. Uh, so, but a lot, a lot of customers will, of course, consider these classical switches because, like, if you look just at the price of the the, the switch or a uh, rocker switch, as you say, and the uh, uh, price of the typical KNX push button, of course, the first one is is more affordable, but. In case you decide for the classical rocker switches, for example, then you also need additional KNX equipment like uh, the binary input modules and the temperature sensors, which are normally al already included in the KNX push buttons. And would you say, you know, uh, that the customer is right in assuming that he will get the same functionality for less money if he chooses the classical switches? Um, well, so in terms of automation, in terms of uh, complete smart home solution, I would say you can still get the same functionality from your automation at all. So most of the time when um, we have, for example, apartments where we combine those classic switches with server-based systems. So you have uh, binary inputs on the server. Maybe you also have, um, you maybe know the products. It's KNX. Um, actors uh, combined with binary inputs, something used very often in hotels. Um, you can use that um, with these types of products or even with servers. So um, 
you can still implement everything on those actors and on those servers, but the difference is you won't get the same usability on the interface. On the, that's what's happening in the room. That's what you see. So um, then the user, you, the, all the functions will transfer into applications and into automation that's not really seen. So direct feedback is missing, of course. And of course, uh, if you use the binary inputs, which are in the electrical fuse box, then probably use, you use more cable as well, right? Um, well, you use more cable and it's, uh, it's getting more complex. For example, if you have a, a classic switch, but it's KNX based, you just have the KNX cable, you plug it in and that's it. Um, if you have uh, a normal power cable and then the binary input, and then you have those small wires going into the rocker switch, and you know, that's something when the electrician will say to you, you know what, the um, wall box is very small, I cannot get all of this in. So it's not too easy. So sometimes we use um, binary inputs um, or switches with binary inputs, and then we don't use classic power cables, but um, some communication cables and just use the binary inputs on them. Okay, I get it. Okay, uh, from the top of your head, you know, uh, what, what, should be, what money should be spent on uh, push buttons on KNX push buttons in a typical family house, like say like 200 square meters? Well, as talking in the prior questions, I would say this depends on the, um, on the concept of, con of the control and the user interfaces and the switches. So talking about those classic switches with binary inputs, uh, maybe in a 200 square meter house, you could maybe get it for, I would say, 1,500 euros or 1,000. Um, because, of course, you have to have the intelligent components um, in your electric box or behind the switch. So this also raises your cost. Speaking of traditional KNX devices or um, yeah, more fancy KNX devices, I would say you need to estimate, for example, one switch per 10 square meters. Um, you have some rooms that have more switches like a kitchen or you have um, rooms with less switches like uh, just a toilet. Um, and then speaking about price, I would say it's something in between 100 and 200 euros to have a good usability. So let's say you, the range is 1,500 to around 3,000 maybe. Okay, that, that's an inter interesting, interesting train of thought. Like, but if you, if you would go for like, like upper limit is, doesn't exist, right? Well, as always, upper limit doesn't exist. You can go by far more fancy as well, and then there's no upper limit. <laughs> okay, uh, let's talk about the configuration uh, of push buttons or, you know, the push button panels, because most of us are used, uh, and it's like uh, how it's been done in the past, you always have uh, one button per one device. So like one light, one, one, one push button, one shade, one push button. Uh, but in a modern living room, you can have like up to 10 lighting bodies and you can have like three to five or even more shades. And uh, in that case, you will get like 15 uh, push buttons on, 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 on the wall, which I believe is very user unfriendly and defies yes. the basic concept of, of, you know, smart home, which is like easy yes. and understandable controls. And how would you say the push buttons configuration should be done in a modern KNX smart home? Yes, yeah, so what you're talking about is really a big problem. So you know, um, most of the smart homes are still integrated by the typical electricians, and that's what they are used to as well. And that's what also um, most of the customers are used to, have, to have one switch per one function. Um, that's something we really want to interrupt. Yeah? We need to break with this principle and um, what typically system integrators do is um, providing a scene-based uh, control concept. So um, the idea is to um, combine in an intelligent way, in a smart way, um, typical lighting or function situations in your room. Because when you, when you imagine yourself, how you're living in your, in your house or in your apartment, you're typically living in scenes. You're not living in functions okay you're going to your couch for example watching tv and then you have 
after maybe when you when you move in your apartment you need a few weeks but then you have your typical setup for watching tv it's maybe one light is dimmed to 30 percent and you close the shutters by 75 percent and that's your mood or your scene for um, watching tv and that's what you should integrate in the control concept as well so what we do most of the time is we remain um, one basic switch on um, the typical heat on the typical installation heat we remain one switch and it's a it's a twofold rocker switch and what it does when you enter the room and you push it it um, activates the scene room entrance and this is for example basing lighting setup and when you switch it off or when you release the when you remove go from the room then it activates the scene um yeah um close room for example that's however you want to name it but what's the idea behind it is that it's still intuitive for every of your guests for children whoever wants to have light for example because speaking of light this is something that's really important light has to function immediately you need to know where the light is and um, that's what we integrate with this kind of scene and with um, the scene close the room you can also combine this for example with your with your speakers and it stops your radio um, and that's something we really try to integrate in every room and then additionally on top we have typical lighting or typical living scenes like tv ambience cooking eating and that's something we integrate on top maybe on other switches or maybe on the same Okay, so basically we can reduce the number of push buttons and improve the functionality by adding scenes to the push buttons, right? So yes. the most common, uh, you've, already, you've already mentioned some scenes, and, but I would say like the most common scene I can think of is like the away scene. So you go, uh, nobody is home, so you want every, uh, uh, all the shades to close and you know, all the lights to turn off and maybe the alarm system to, to activate itself. And what are the other interesting or usable scenes that you you use in your day-to-day -day work and where should they be located in the in the house uh yeah that's uh, that's really a good a good point so you mentioned already those um scenes which are called central scenes for us so um in the hallway next to your entrance door we have um most of the time we place a, a room controller or um switch which provides more functionality and there you have those away away scene you were mentioning already um, you also have a coming home scene for example because we um, often integrate also the heating system so when you go when you leave your home also the heating system is lowered by two degrees for example which directly saves you some money and when you come back home the heating system goes back to comfort so that's something you also um, should take into account. Um, another very special scene is um, going into holiday. So a lot of systems provide um, uh, um, some simulation, you know, um, which uh, imitates your behavior at home. Like a present so simulation. Lights. Yeah, it's like a present simulation. So that's something we also um, integrate very often. And then going away from the central scenes um, there's also happened something happening in the living uh, in the bedroom master bedroom for example so good night good morning is also something we really use um, very often because this is the same situation you maybe forgot some lights somewhere and you go into bed and you're really tired and then you just press one switch and all lights um, shut and you can also integrate this in two ways like most of the knx devices they provide a short press and a long press so what we often do is a short press is just for lighting and long press is for um, also other functionalities like uh, shutters for example then th then they close as well oh that's a nice that's a nice concept haven't thought of that before uh, but if you look at a typical electrical design project for a house or apartment the push buttons are almost always done in a way that we discussed before. So one push button, one device, and no scene buttons at all. So who is actually responsible and who should actually tell the customer, you know, uh, uh, present him with this different concept of push buttons with a lot of scene push buttons included, like you described before? 
So is it, is it, is it uh, the smart home in the integrator? Is it the electrician? Smart home yeah. design, uh, electrical designer, architect maybe? I don't know. So I would say uh, it's a good question you, that you're asking to me, right? Because um, there's, of course, a reason companies like Koyakon came up several years ago. And we're not the only ones doing this kind of work. Um, because in the construction industry right now, there's uh, one significant gap. Um, it's the same like George mentioned in episode one. Um, there's a need for some kind of smart home designer. That's um, what system integrators provide more or less. But some of the system integrators are more IT specialists. And some of them, like us, we try to do that, are more on the architectural side of thinking smart home. Um, so from our perspective, we are connection between the customer, the architect and the electrician. Um, we try to think the living situation in your home like an architect. So we um, do a lot of consulting of the customer. So we try to um, think how he will be living. We try to anticipate all the situations he has. And on the other hand, we need to be um, technically speaking like the electrician. So that's a complete different language. And so we see today that in a lot of projects, this kind of connecting expert is missing. Um, some of the electricians, you can, when I'm speaking like a customer, so I'm thinking I'm a customer, I would say you really need to force your electrician to think in a design manner. And that's something most of the time they don't do. So I would say definitely try to integrate some company like Smart Home Designer into your construction. Because basically you do a little bit more work before with all this consulting, but then in the end you have a good product. And also if the push buttons are not set right, then you have to return to, to the project many times and, you know, like... Uh, reiterate the functionality and yes. in the end you do the same amount of work but you have worse results like yes that's also it's a big problem um for smart home industry because what i am often faced with is this opinion like okay smart home doesn't really work we have a lot of requests um, from customers who got a smart home um, provided by electrician company, for example, that is not working really good. So they ask us to, to, to join it to see if we can change the programming. And um, what really needs to happen is the customers need to change their mind a little bit. So when you have uh, IT infrastructure, for example, you will always have some service contract with your IT expert with the company. And that's something that will happen in smart home industry as well. So um, the smart home company or the smart home designer will be the first point of contact in terms uh, in, in case something's not working correctly, because they can provide better additional service. The electrician is often coming to your house checking something, but the system integrator, as he is more or less IT based, he can check everything remote, for example. So that's a that's a big problem, and we need to yeah change the mind in the industry and yeah integrate this new expert in the construction side. Yeah. Okay. Thanks uh, for this uh, answer. And um, what about more advanced manual control devices, like you know room controllers or even touch screens? A lot of people imagine a smart home is you know a touch screen on the wall, and you also see it in many smart uh, smart home showrooms. So. Do you think a touchscreen on the wall is a good idea or not? Uh, definitely not in every room. So I have, for example, customers who want to have an iPad in every room, but um, I wouldn't say that's a good idea. So you still, you need to, tablets are more or less often IP based. So they are some kind of software and software is not so reliable like typical building automation, like KNX, for example. So I would say you should have a basic control setup, like basic switches or room controllers, which are also basic KNX switches. And maybe on the central place in the apartment or in your house, you can have um, iPads or tablets. So there are also tablets provided by the big switch companies. Um, and then you can use this, for example, 
for graphic visualizations, for having the video intercom, for um, controlling some uh, automations, for example, on your server. Um, that's something where you use the tablet for, but uh, not for basic switching operations, because you have to unlock it, for example, it goes into deep sleep, and that's not a best idea. Okay. Um, if we're talking about the functionality of uh, push buttons, so you mentioned some, some other functions before, besides lights and shades, which functions do you think are cool to have on, on you know, tied to the push buttons? Well, typically, um, or what most of the customers ask for is volume control for their audio system. So that's something um, they really like to use on the switch as well. And um, what I like to integrate, for example, is controlling some kind of automations. Because uh, what we didn't talk about in terms of controllability of your smart home is you need um, to take care of the controllability for the customer. So the worst thing that can happen is that the customer gets the feeling he's not able to control your house anymore. So and that's something that happens quite often when you provide fancy automations uh, directly integrated into the KNX system. So for example, in terms of lighting, you can provide human-centric light, adaptive lighting that changes the color by day. and um, this happens and sometimes the customer asks himself, okay, now why is the color of my light um, orange? So what I want to integrate um, or what I like to integrate is uh, feedback and a switch for this kind of automation so that he can see, ah, okay, there's a simulation running and I can stop this simulation directly on the switch. Yeah, probably also in, in, in the case of uh, weather station and smart, smart shading control, like also that automation could be on the switch, right? To turn it off. Yes, smart. Smart shading is another very good example. Um, that's also very difficult if you automate it because most of the time it's wrong. So um, a customer is asking himself, why is my sunshade going up or going down? So um, a good idea for this example is to um, provide the room automation a signal of presence. So if yeah. there's presence in the room, you just pause the automation. And if the presence is gone, then you continue. Nice. Okay, so let's uh, let's do some quick questions. What do you prefer, labeled engraved push buttons or not? Well, definitely not labeled. Uh, that's the worst I could imagine. Um, I like engraved uh, switches sometimes in terms of design, but I'm more a fan of some kind of adaptive switches with maybe a small display. Um, yeah, so that's my choice. Okay. Can you name your three favorite brands and uh, models of uh, KNX push buttons? Um, KNX push buttons, um, I would say my, my favorite model is the Basalt Sentido. Uh, I really love the multi-touch control. Um, you can still have the basic principle of room on and off, but you have more functionality. I also do like um, the basic KNX switches from Gira. Um, as they provide a classic design. Um, so you can integrate them as well, for example, in, in, in old uh, systems with the multi-switch optics. Um, in terms of room controllers, um, I also like the Gira Tast Sensor Fear. It's very sleek design. But um, for, for display switches, for example, I like the Merton Multi-Touch Pro. It's really sleek. It's just a, a black small rectangular switch and it has a lot of functionality. Yeah, I like that one as well. Uh, what about touch screens? Do you have a favorite here as well? Um, we use quite often the, the Gira G1 uh, as it connects quite good to their video intercom. Um, but uh, we are still, I would say we're still experimenting with uh, different products on the markets. Uh, I'm not too... Um, I'm not too feeling too good with the Gear one. So we have Peak NX, for example, here right now and experimenting with this one. It's uh, very interesting. It's based on Windows 10 IoT. Um, but yeah, that's the two, the two I would suggest right now. Okay, thanks. And um, what in your view are the most common mistakes or bad practices when selecting uh, push buttons? Well, um, I'd say the worst, um, the worst is to just rely on what your electrician is selling you. 
because you need to know, um, of course, the, the sales principle, um, especially in Germany, is uh, like you have a, a, the companies have a contract with the electrician company to get uh, specific discounts. So most of the time, the decision of the electrician company is not based on functionality of the switch. So there could be even a switch that fits into your frame design. For example, if you want to have a specific frame design, there could be a switch that's, um, that fits into this frame, but it's from the different company, but providing more information or more functionality. So um, I would definitely say, keep your eyes open, do some research on the market, just Google your frame design and KNX and let's see what's coming up on Google. Um, that's, I would say, is the worst worst mistake you can do. Okay. Do you have any advice for the integrators? What should they be mindful of when, you know, proposing, installing and programming the, the, the push buttons? So for the installers um, or for my, for my colleagues, for example, I'm always saying you need to keep in mind that everyone who's living in this house needs to understand what this switch is doing. So the worst is when you press the switch and you don't understand what it's doing. For example, sometimes you see switches, um, they are integrated in a way that they change something or they, they provide on and off signal, for example. So when you um, have switched the light already on and then you press the button and it sends an on signal, nothing happens. So in this case, there are some customers, they are directly dialing you and say, okay, something is wrong, doesn't work. So keep in mind what situations can come up when controlling something with this switch. And this should be really fault proof. Okay, that's it. I'm actually all of the, uh, out of questions. So do you have anything to add for the end? Uh, well, I think, um, Usability is really a big, a big topic. So um, for all of the customers and for all of the integrators, keep that in mind, because um, as soon as the customer, as soon as you, when you're living in your, in your house, have the feeling of losing control, that's something you don't want to have. So everyone should keep that in mind and then you get intuitive and really smart homes. So another episode done, Daniel. Thank you for sharing your wisdom. And for Thanks the viewers, for having me, Satya. Yeah. And for the viewers, uh, there will be another survey uh, on the topic of push buttons. Check it out uh, when it's available. And you know, like always, like, subscribe, follow us, share, and comment. And most importantly, join us for the next episode of Talking Smart Homes. Same one home time, same one home channel. Live long and prosper. <laughs>